Hello, I'm Kristen Brznowski, the executive editor of TV Drama, and we're taking a behind the scenes look at season two of Gangs of London, speaking with lead EP Thomas Bensky and lead writer Tom Butterworth. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Tom. Hi. Oh. Very excited to be talking about the second season. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could start by you telling me how is season two of Gangs of London bigger and better than season one? Look, I don't know if it's big or better. I think the big difference, you know, for us was that obviously with the success of season one, I think we 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 knew we could be ambitious and we knew we could push. And I think that confidence, I think, kind of put both pressure, but also because obviously we wanted to to do to make something outstanding, which I, I really hope audiences feel we did but it was just I guess about you know trusting our instinct a lot and I think kind of being able to to try to bring to the screen the kind of gangs of London's we all kind of tried to create so so I think that was the, the big thing for, for the second season yeah I mean I was definitely hoping it would be as big and as good as season one and um probably not the best judge of that but yeah I mean I think we did you know the hope was that we were able to go deeper into the characters and expand their journeys and then and also expand the world to a degree and sort of introduce a couple of new gangs and build the world out to sort of include Cobra and his Georgians and a completely new gang, the Algerians, to tell our sort of series two story. And also to sort of go vertically up to, and understand the investors a bit better and sort of um, paint in that really mysterious sort of entity as it was in the first season. Um, and yeah, that was our sort of, that was what we were shooting for. Quite a bit of time had passed since season one. Curious, how do you keep audiences engaged and up to date and really plugged in with the brand when there's been this prolonged period of rest? I think that's really tricky actually, because I think unless you kind of really have a kind of um, franchise approach where you can do a lot of stuff off air, there's not a huge amount. So I think kind of, you know, the anticipation builds, funnily enough. And I think we all have had this in our daily lives where, where you know, people are kind of begging you to tell you or to tell you when it's coming out. And look, the amazing thing with gangs is the scale and ambition of it, the ambition in the writing and the ambition in the execution. And um, that takes time. That takes a moment. You know, it's not a, a, a show that I think you can just turn around quite quickly. But as the season evolve, I think our idea is to try and create a slightly more kind of um, uh, condensed rhythm, perhaps, and, and so on. But th th there isn't anything necessarily specific. We thought about cool things to do, like should we, are there kind of storylines that we could explore and so on. But maybe in the second season is a bit early, but if the show keeps growing, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a bit more world building, where, which we can do off air while the seasons kind of are, are being made. Now, in terms of writing, tell me about some of that world building and those character journeys that being conveyed in season two. I mean, I think we were definitely, our, our starting off point was quite early on, we decided that there was still an awful lot of story potential in where we had left off at the end of season two that those explosions at the end of series one we felt like a lot of our characters would still be burning and so it was we felt rather than do a sort of a reset and jump forward or say that was just a story all those stories and predicaments were they'd moved on it felt like there was lots to explore so i think all our characters are in some way informed by one of the central problems of season one, which was how do you resolve this paradox of being a gangster family? How, how can you seize and maintain power in this world and still have a family that is, is, is recognizable with that name? Um, and I guess within that, we sort of, <clears throat> it's very much an, sort of an ensemble piece of one of the things I loved about the season drew me to sort of get involved with season two, but it felt like those central journeys of, of Elliot and Sean felt like they they were going to be shaped off what had happened in season one and Elliot felt like he was on a journey from troubled undercover cop to troubled gangster eventually and it was kind of our job to to make sure that by series end of season two he had taken a place in a place you would never expected him to at the beginning but that it somehow felt inevitable that it was surprising and inevitable that he should be there and I guess with Sean, the big question with him was, was, did he have it in him to be who his father was? And 
I loved how in, I loved how that stayed mysterious in season one. You know, it really felt like the, that he did and he didn't, and you did and you didn't want him to have that in him. And it, and so to bring him back, you know, was a was a huge decision. You know, which we had many discussions over. But having done so, we felt that it was probably the case that he hadn't yet learned like his father had to learn from the ground up, from a young man up, what it really took. And that his arc through the second season would be a sort of a dark, tragic realization of that, that he wanted nothing more in the world than to come back and take care of his family, but that he didn't yet have what it required to do that. And it was gonna gradually and tragically find him out by the end. So those are kind of the, those are the broader story brushes, would you say, Thomas? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And look, at, I, I think the amazing thing, you know, for us is like, uh, the, the thing we found in this season is, 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 is I, I think people love the characters. And I think one of the amazing thing of, of working with Tom is how easily he kind of managed to find a voice of those characters. I think one of the great thing was to be able to really kind of connect with, with really the kind of, you know, very primal relationships that exist or conflict that exists inside 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 those those characters. And I think that's the reason the season kind of was received so well is I think people could really kind of empathize, sympathize, um, uh, and, and 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 kind of feel the kind of emotions that our characters had. So and 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 look, this is this was always the ambition, right? Like it's quite a novelistic kind of you know, without sounding pretentious, uh, Shakespearean shape um, show that kind of you know, trying to kind of combine that kind of extremely deep character work with a very kind of um, kinetic genre lens of like action and so on. And I think that's what we all love is the kind of high and low nature of the show that that we can explore. Was there anything that was learned from season one, either audience reaction or production feedback that informed season two? And even including with the writing. Don't shoot in Kent in December. I think that was a big one. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I, I would correct shooting Kent in December if you're trying to blow something up. Um, Gaines is, is, is a bit specific, right? Like it's not made like every other television show, especially not in Europe. So I think huge learnings from season one, but huge learning from season two, basically. And I think we are finding our process. And I think coming from movies, for me, the amazing thing with TV is you have a chance to be quite iterative, actually, in terms of process. So it's always about tweaking and about... Um, deploying resources and, and things in the most efficient way, because obviously we're still working inside a, a, a schedule and a budget, yet try to be extremely ambitious in terms of what we put in, in on, 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 on TV. And, and, and that takes some real precision producing and precision writing. And I feel like one of the most incredible thing I would say on, on, on season two and Tom, I don't know what, but I, I feel that once we got into a rhythm, it really felt like a very symbiotic unit from writing to producing to directing. Like, you know, we were so lucky to have incredible writers, incredible directors, incredible, incredible crew that kind of went all the way. And of course our stellar cast. And I think the, the biggest lesson is in a show of this size, galvanizing that momentum and bringing everyone in that journey um, is, is, is the task. And frankly, it starts with the, confidence and quality of the writing which Tom um, did brilliantly at so I agree with the what Tom was saying at the end there which it did feel like it's it was we were finding way we were finding the best way to do it as we went along as as, as you often and most usually do mm. in sort of making this series telly but it was particularly the case I think because the the, reason, the main reason I wanted to sort of get involved with the show was because it felt quite rare mm. as a director sort of driven piece you know so much of what is on telly is kind of show run by writers and I and I think what so did, one of the most distinctive things about the first season was it was properly cinematic and it was clearly you know it wasn't beholden to anything other than trying to be full-on cinema on the telly and it worked and I think therefore sort of the, the further we got into the process and almost the closer we got to shooting it you could see it as storyboarded sequences and we had a sort of flavor of what the episodes we're going to sort of come at you as cinematically that it sort of can it gelled it started to feel like oh we know what we're doing now and i think about a third of the way through that was the case and and you know don't forget that we were we were leapfrogging around covid the whole time as well so it also meant that it was um it was maybe a bit more convoluted than it needed to be and the only thing i would uh say mm -hmm. is i think kind of as tom said is i think gareth evans and matt flannery the two creators i think gave permission to be ambitious like this. I think they 
And, and to be frank, Sky, Ames, everyone understood that and I think gave us the confidence to shape it the way Tom explained. And, and I think really you, you can't take away the fact that, you know, Gareth and Matt are so specific voices. And for me, it was absolute honor to kind of birth that project. And I feel we all feel a set, certain sense of duty to these guys to make sure that we kind of, you know, pick up the baton or whatever you say in English to kind of continue the, the legacy of the show. And but but I think we can't underestimate how important it was for them to 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 to, to set this up in a way that gave everyone the confidence to be able to continue with that ambition, which is kind of quite, as Tom said, unconventional, I would say, in 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 kind of you know TV terms. So yeah. Now in a time when there is much talk about leaning into the lighter side of drama. Season two seems to double down on some of those darker aspects and violence. Tell me about that mix of dark and gritty and action and stunt work that the viewers are really responding to. Yeah, we didn't really look at that memo, did we? The last uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I think this is, I don't think we have a task ourselves with, with the warm and the fuzzy, upping all that. I, I think it was, if anything, it was the opposite. I mean, one thing that's definitely different I think with season two is that this sort of the action palette, the sort of the intensity of that just has a different flow because it's 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 Corin who is sort of behind a lot of that and his background is just more horror than mm -hmm. maybe Gareth's was. But um, you know, Corin and Gareth were good friends and so they were definitely sympathetic about what the whole show was and how that would fit into, you know, the conception of the whole show happily. Mm -hmm. But it's not he didn't use less blood than Gareth. It's also kind of, you know, of course, we interrogate all of this. And I think Tom is right. Like, what I love about the season is that it is quite directorially focused. Like, it is very much in terms of execution, especially that kind of more visual work. It's very much Corinne's palette, to Tom's point. Um, but we try not to be gratuitous, actually. And I think this is one of the things when we're thinking about action sequences or we're thinking of, of, of kind of fairly... Uh, graphic situation is always trying to kind of um, exist in that character and story rather than just gratuity and even the way action is developed um, the ambition or, or intent is always to try and embed that in story like action should be story right like a, it shouldn't be the way maybe more conventional American shows or TV or films are made where you cut to the set piece and the set piece is kind of its own world like we try to you know, create those set pieces very much, um, in, you know, inside the writer's room. And that then takes it taken into a kind of what we call an like action development room that then takes that those concepts, those starting point and, and really builds something, hopefully that is cinematic and unique and then kind of interrogate those things and so on. But yeah, I, I don't think we really, um, we were swimming upstream when it comes to the lighter side of drama, but maybe season three might be a romantic comedy with with a lot of of love of of of, of love and 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 affection. Well, the audiences love it. So congratulations on what is a very exciting season two, and thank you both for taking us behind the scenes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.